Welcome to another Word Defibrillator to kickstart your day with I, Sean Collard. Word Defibrillator for today, where we kickstart your day with a word from within the word. This one, <laughs> I don't think I saw this one coming, and it's going to be quite interesting to go through it. So let's do that together. So it is three, 1 Peter 3. Verse 13. Uh, let's just see. Let him turn away from wickedness. For let him who wants to enjoy life. Let's, see. let's go a little bit back. Um, finally, let's start at verse 8. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind. United in spirit. Sympathizing with one another. Loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble. Nice one. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue-lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessing, praying for, uh, for their welfare, happiness and protection, and truly pity and loving them. For know that to this you have been called that you may yourselves inherit a blessing from God that you may obtain blessing as is bringing the welfare and happiness and protection. Wow! For let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days, good whether apparent or not, keep his tongue free from evil and his lips from guile, treachery and deceit. Isn't that amazing? Never return evil for evil. You need to go into a place where you have blessings praying for their welfare, happiness and protection and truly pitying and loving them. And then you're going to obtain a blessing as is, bringing welfare and happiness and protection into your lives. What a nice way of doing it. Let him turn away from wickedness, and that's uh, in verse 11, and shun it and let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbedness, from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts, and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow men, and with yourselves, but pursue, go after them. Oh my word, you're not serious, Lord. We've got to really search for peace, and we've got to push for it. We've got to seek for peace, harmony, and disturbedness from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. You mean we just can't let it go? Well, verse 12 tells us, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who practice evil, to oppose them, to frustrate and defeat them. Now, who is there to hurt you, if you are zealous followers of that which is good? And that's God. But even in case you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed, happy to be envied. Do not dread or be afraid of their threats, nor be disturbed by their opposition. I know we sit in positions, you and I, there's times we, we just feel the, the world is against us. Or that just that one person. It doesn't matter how much you are there standing up for righteousness, your lips are saying the right things. God says, I am there for you. I, My heart is really towards you. But in verse 14, but even in case you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed, happy to be envied. Do not dread or be afraid of their threats, nor be disturbed by their opposition. But in your hearts, set Christ apart as holy. Now, holy is set apart. He's not as everybody else. You cannot mention the world and Jesus Christ in behavior in the same sentence. It's just so divorced from one another. Christ stands alone. Acknowledge him as Lord. Always be ready to give logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you. But do it courteously and respectfully. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear, unimpaired, so that when you are falsely accused as evildoers, those who threaten you abusively and revile your right behavior in Christ, 
may come to be ashamed of slandering your good lives. For it is better. Seriously? Yes, it is. Verse 17. For it is better to suffer unjustly for doing right, if that should be God's will, than suffer justly for doing wrong. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I pray. This is a tough one. We just know that we've been in situations like this. And for me, it wasn't an easy one the last time. I was the one screaming and shouting, or I was the one rejecting the other person. But we are called to a higher calling. We're called to excellence in Christ Jesus. And I know, Father, that without the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, assisting us, without the example of Jesus Christ, without him being there as our righteousness, how would we ever be able to achieve this? But, Father, we do. We do want to have a life where you are taking care of us and, Father, that we are standing uprightly for you. And, Father, it is better to suffer unjustly for doing right than to suffer justly for doing wrong. But, Father, in those moments where it's so tough, in that moment where we want to defend the kingdom, in that moment where we want to defend our honor and our pride, I pray, Father, we lay it all down. That we are courteous. Father, knowing that, as your word says, you are there. Your eyes are upon us, the righteous. Those who are upright and in right standing with you. And, Father, your ears are attentive to our prayer. So, Father, I pray that you hear our prayer, that you show up on our behalf. Father. I pray for a physical manifestation of, of you in our lives. Father, Father, that what you've spoken about us in the throne room, mentioning our name. Father, I pray that your promises are yes and amen. And I pray for a physical manifestation of those promises now, Father, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>